This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this swirling liquid background sort of design using GIMP. And this is something I originally saw done with Photoshop here on YouTube and I'll put a link in the description to the original video I saw just to give that person uh, credit for coming up with this video idea. I figured it would be pretty cool to show you how it could be done with GIMP as well, although the approach I'm going to take is slightly different. Uh, in order to follow along with this tutorial you'll need to make sure you have uh, one of the newer versions of GIMP uh, installed. You'll want at least version 2.10 and if you don't know which one you have just go to help and go to about GIMP and it'll show you right here which version you have. Like it says here 2.10.2. You're going to want to make sure you have at least 2.10. If you have that you're good to go. Another indicator would be whether or not you have this dark theme and these new icons. The older version of GIMP, uh, the older versions have uh, like the gray, the like gray theme in the the older icon design. So uh, that said, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new document. I want to make sure the size is 1280 by 720 in pixels uh, or whatever size you'd like your background to be. If you're designing like a Facebook cover photo or something you want to use, I think it's 851 by 315 or for your Twitter page or whatever else. That's where you would set the size right there. Um, fill width we want to have set to transparency and then go ahead and click OK and there's our new document should be a checkerboard with a transparent background there but the first thing I want to do is set the foreground and background color for the colors I'll be using here this pink and blue you could use whatever two colors you'd like I'd recommend using two contrasting colors I think this shade of pink and this shade of blue work well together so I used that if you'd like to use this shade right here this specific shade that I'm using uh, for the foreground the blue is 0001A9 and then for the background color, it's FF0066. So just go ahead and type those into the HTML notation field. And go ahead and click OK, and we'll be get, uh, good to get started. So the first thing I want to do is fill this in with pink. So I'll go to Edit, Fill with Background Color. And what I want to do now is just add some paint. Use the paintbrush to just add some blue area here. I'm going to grab the, uh, the paintbrush tool. And for the brush, I'm going to use, I think this is Cell... O2, something like that. You can use whatever brush you'd like. It really doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to bring the size up, make that a little bigger, and I'm just going to create some blue in there. Maybe not that much. Let me undo that a little bit. Put some blue in there like that. Something like that's good. Pretty good. You don't really have to uh, make it exactly like I'm just... All that matters is you got some blue color in there. Like I said, you could use whatever brush you'd like. You could even use this one if you like and, and add some of that in there. Uh, what we're going to do next is go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to bring this, I'm going to slide this to the right a little bit and watch on the screen as it blurs. I want to use something like, I'd say, 15, thereabouts, should be pretty good. Go ahead and click OK to blur that. And now we'll go to Filters, uh, Distort, and we're going to choose Whirl and Pinch. And I want to bring the radius all the way to the right. I want to bring the pinch about three quarters of the way to the right and the whirl I want to bring that to the right a little bit as well. Maybe something like that right there. That's pretty good. I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And what I'd recommend doing here is creating a duplicate copy of this just in case you want to get back to this point um, because what we're going to be doing next is pretty destructive. I'm going to right click on this layer right here. Actually, you know what? I'll just highlight the layer and click the icon down here that says create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And now what we're going to do is go to the uh, warp transform tool. Go ahead and click on that. And for the settings over here, we want move pixels selected. Size, about 365. Uh, let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. Uh, hardness, about 71.6. Strength, 71.9 doesn't have to be those exact numbers, just set it to like 70 or 70 something. Spacing, about 20. And that right there should be pretty good. And what you could do now is you could just click and drag on the image and you'll notice it kind of just warps it around. It kind of just swirls it around like that. And you could just go ahead and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. If you'd like to zoom out, just hold control and roll down the mouse wheel. Just give this a, a, a whimsical, swirling sort of look. And as you, as you can see, that right there looks pretty good. But if you'd like to do it even further, what you can do now is go to Filters, Blur, and give this another Gaussian Blur. I'll bring this up to maybe uh, 8, something like that. Go ahead and click OK. And then you can go ahead and do it again. You click on the uh, Warp Transform tool and go ahead and swirl it some more. 
So make sure to pay attention to your edges here. If you notice here, this, this is starting to show through the previous layer. You just got to bring that back out to the edge like that. Same thing down here. And you can just play around with it until you get it looking how you'd like it to look. And that, you know, that pretty much does it. One thing I, I'd like to uh, mention is that while you're doing this, while you still have the warp tool selected, this is not finalized yet. In order to finalize this, you'll need to select a different tool. So I'm going to click on the move tool. And there we go. Now it's finalized. And what you can do now is uh, if you, if you want to do what I did here for the thumbnail, what I did was I just, I just tweaked the colors a little bit. You can go to colors and levels. And if you take this, um, this little node over here to the right and slide that to the left, you can notice the color starts to pop a little more on the page. And you do the same thing here with the center node. You bring that to the right a little bit. We bring this one to the right just to bring out the blue a little more. Something like that. You can toggle the preview off and on to see the difference. If you notice, it's a little more vibrant now. Go ahead and click OK. And you could even edit it some more if you go to Colors, Curves. You could lighten it up a bit. Maybe do something like that. I'm going to go to the blue channel and add some blue in there. And then bring out the blue a little more by sliding that to the left. And you can make the pink pop a little more as well by going to the red channel, bring that up a little bit. And then this over some more. You could toggle it off and on to see the difference. And that should pretty much give you an idea. That should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating this uh, swirling liquid background sort of effect using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.